All right, so today we're gonna be working on the F-350 again, putting wheel cylinders in the rear on it. And this should give us usable brakes at this point to be able to actually put the thing around a little bit, maybe even get closer to getting the thing registered. Uh, don't pay attention to this, this is a future video. And also I had to dive into my backup stash, I'm running low. Ugh. Anyway, let's get to it. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. We're here at the back wheel. We're gonna go ahead and get it off and start looking at the brakes on it. I already started adjusting the front brakes, but I'm not certain, I'm not certain if the adjustments are taking correctly. Uh, it's been acting kind of weird. There's a spider in this wheel hub, or a wheel. Uh, okay, Mr. Spider, it's time for you to go. God, I hate barn spiders. They look so fucking creepy. Anyway, uh, let's make sure we're on forward because this is left-hand thread. Okay, basically none of these want to come off. Breaker bar, meet wheel, wheel, breaker bar. You two will now be fighting. Oh God. Okay, that's... That's on there very, very, very tight. All right, uh, cheater bar from the jack. All right. Come on. Oh, I think it's going. Let's get the other ones. Okay. I think that's all of them. You know, I think I ran into the same problem that a lot of guys run into with left-handed thread things in an impact gun. A lot of impact guns are designed to provide more torque in one direction, that direction being left, since most things come off that way. And so when you have something that has to come off going right, they, uh, they don't have as much uh, power. How do we get the drum off? Does it just slide off? This whole axle have to come out to get the drum off? I think I have to pull the axle to uh, get this off. Which sucks, but I don't know. It's a different time, I guess. This is a Rockwell axle. I'd never heard of them before. Apparently there are two options on this truck. Rockwell or Dana 70. I don't know if the Dana 70 was a dually, uh, but the Rockwell, it's a, uh, let me see if I can remember the number, it's like B, B140 NX1, or that might be wrong. Um, but it's a, as far as I can tell, it was only ever used on this truck. I Googled just the axle number and the only thing that came up was information about this truck. So um, I think these are, right hand threads let's see if we can get them off i heard that there were some cone shaped keepers behind this but i don't see them so i don't know I'll keep going okay so camera died in the middle of that uh you didn't miss much though i just took these bolts off or nuts rather and uh two of the studs came with them um I'm not too worried about that. I think it'll be okay. Uh, but I uh, had to look up how to remove these keepers. And the method to remove them is just that. Hit it, and then it vibrates apart. So let's see what's inside this axle. That is, that is the axle, I hope. Ooh, shit. Um, can that go back in? Yeah, 
There we go. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that I can put it back together before I continue to take it apart. It's supposed to be a full floating axle, which I think is a good thing. I don't know much about axles, so. Yep, there's the splines. I'm guessing it's an open differential in the back. Man, that thing's nasty. The oil honestly doesn't look that bad. I'm not seeing a lot of anything metal. Although, if there was any metal, it'd probably be. You people, please stop dying. If there was any metal, it'd probably be in the uh, the uh, hog head, pumpkin, whatever you want to call it. So, anyway, um, this is not wanting to budge at all. Uh, I probably should have done this before I opened this whole thing up and. Put now I have a bunch of shit here that I'm going to have to roll around in. But I think I need to back the adjuster off on the disc brake, or disc brake, the drum brake, so that I can actually pull this thing loose. Because um, I don't think it's going to want to come loose otherwise. I don't know. I guess we can uh, pull the axle nut. Which... Okay, um, I don't really like that. I, I, okay, well, I, I, it's fine. The retention on this is just those tabs. Rather than having like a cotter pin, which I guess you couldn't do because the axle's in the center. So that's why it's done like that. But I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure that out. So let me, uh, I guess, hammer all these back up, get the axle nut out of, that, out of there because I'm pretty sure it is I'm pretty sure the whole bearing assembly has to come out so anyway bring you guys back in a minute I was racing all over town looking for an axle nut socket of two and nine sixteenth sides every place I went to was like oh that's pretty big wouldn't have anything like that but I did find this. This is an oil filter thing. It's 64 millimeters. It's one millimeter too small, but it may be able to, may be able to get it on there. Come on. You know you want to be 65 millimeters, not 64. Seemed like a good plan. Let me regroup again. Okay, I think I've decided no more filming at night considering how bad low light is on this camera. Anyway, uh, I had to wait till things open back up to get what I believe is the right size socket. I'm a little sad that my uh, little rigged up solution wasn't gonna work, but this seems to be the right size. There's two and nine sixteenths. Okay, so now I should be able to put this on there and then just, there we go. Oh, it took all night and I needed it for literally half a second. And I forgot to pick up gear oil and also line wrenches. All right, now this whole drum should just come off if the brake is adjusted correctly. All right, getting to the self-adjuster was interesting and also wasn't really working the way it was supposed to, I don't think. I have some suspicions about what we're gonna find in here. I think it's loose. Uh, I've been going at it with pry bar, hammer, all kinds of shit to get it loose. All that wonderful undercoating is falling all over these bearings. The reason I say it's interesting is that there's only supposed to be one hole there. And this one looks like it was uh, made by a farmer. And you probably can't see in there, but the self-adjuster is on this side instead of on this side. So I think they put it in backwards. Over there, you can see there's only one hole on that. So... Let's uh, take it off and see what's inside. Oh man, I need a better angle, but uh, still don't have that good tripod, so. 
Oh. Okay. How much does this weigh? Four quadrillion tons? Yep. Oh. Oh boy. Well, that's uh Yeah, that's that's been, that's been, that's been on there for a little while. <laughs> And the inner, or the, the drum itself. I guess that's maybe a brake material. Let's look at the self adjuster down here. I bet what happened here is this is supposed to go the other way around, and uh, they put it in backwards. Realized it was backwards, and said, "Fuck it, not doing that." And just cut a hole in the plate to access it. I mean, there's our prize, the brakes cylinder, or, you know, the, the wheel cylinder. Ugh, okay, yeah, it's just chalky on the inside. Those might actually be able to be rebuilt, but I'm not returning the old, or the new ones, so I'm gonna probably just put the new ones in there. Um, and call it a day on that. So I think I've made the decision to potentially reuse the hardware for right now and just get the cylinder out of there because I don't think the hardware is going to be very easy to find. Uh, the self-adjuster was actually seized. Um, so this end, uh, which is just the, I guess, bearing end, it just twists, it came off easy. But the other end, uh, which we have the end of it up here, I got it unseized and I'll show you how but um, it was on the threads, it was just stuck. Very, very, very stuck. So used a little bit of penetrating oil and then I found this actually worked really well. So I put it in the vice grips and then I got a screwdriver in that for leverage and was able to just kind of work it and get it loose and then get it all the way off. And then I uh, proceeded to clean the threads with my shirt. And uh, now, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of anti-seize on there, uh, which I thought I brought over here. Ah, yes. It's a little bit of anti-seize so that hopefully it won't lock up again. And then we'll put it back on and uh, assess the situation. Um, which before I put that on there, I'm actually going to run this all the way down and make sure it goes all the way down. But I'll bring you back once where uh, I have this back in. This is the new wheel cylinder. Looks about the same size. Difference is that this one is, well, 100% made in China. And that's probably the original Wagner. All right, I've got a variety of wrenches. I have a feeling that this is probably gonna be three-eighths or maybe it was once three-eighths yeah this is this is better three-eighths is not really doing it for me would you believe me if I told you that uh, instead of digging through my uh, shit trying to find that 716th wrench that uh, I just went out and bought the line wrenches well, that's what I did. And of course, they're in this stupid fucking plastic packaging. We, after battling with this thing, I have won. Is that actually three eighths? How do these work? <sighs> yeah, I mean, that bleeder is gonna be just in the way. What size is that bleeder? So I was pretty sure it was 3 8 Well, I guess I should have guessed it. It did come loose, but uh, so it's a brake line. We need to run from there to here. Well, 
brake line stash didn't pan out. I found this one little piece in there, but it wasn't the right setup, so I uh, went back to the auto parts store and came back with a whole setup. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we have to roll our own. Funny story. I think I left the brake line, the old one that is, at the auto parts store. <sighs> Why do I have to make everything harder for myself? Well, not driving back because I don't want to and the truck's low on gas, so I guess uh, just get to roll our own. Figure it out as we go, as usual. New uh, cylinders on there and brake line. And uh, I debated for a pretty long while on uh, if I was gonna redo the brake line right now. I decided no, it doesn't need to look pretty. It needs to function. And uh, I'll fix it when I'm actually gonna make this truck pretty. And I, I promise I will get back and fix it. I just don't want to, I, I, I don't want to make it right now. I'm done making brake line right now. I just want to get the shit back on there. And then I got to go to the other one because I was hoping to split this up by doing this wheel. Then I have the carb rebuild kit today. And I get to do, go do that. But the carb rebuild kit's late. So who knows when the fuck that's going to get here. So I'm probably going to have to go to the other wheel and do more brake line and shit. So we'll use what I learned here, and hopefully the next one will be better. Anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, you see, I'm, uh, I'm not too great with geometry. For those of you who don't know how drum brakes work, I figured I'd give you a small demonstration before we move forward. Let me go hit the brake pedal. As you can see, the hydraulic fluid that comes into here and then pushes out the two pistons that then push your brake shoes out into your brake drum. Not really sure if you're supposed to do this while the drum's off, but I mean, whatever. I can just push them back into place. <laughs> so this is working correctly. So the other wheel cylinder might maybe not be bypassing maybe i don't know um there's no leaks so far there's this is not a real test though because th this isn't really any pressure the other one could be bypassing it's just bypassing when we get higher pressure on the system since there's no resistance back here to this opening except for like the springs um there's really not much pressure in the system because pressure is created by resistance to flow all right Brakes back there are done. I did find that I have one tire that's off the bead back there, but you know, we're not really driving right now. We're gonna get probably all new tires for this. Pretty sure the tires are ancient, but they're not original, I know that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, buddy came over, helped me bleed the brakes. I've adjusted them yeah, a little bit. Fronts might still need some adjustment. The rears I think are pretty good and the pedal is not awful. Okay, come on. But, oh man, that doesn't, it's on there. But I think that it is high time for a test drive. Let's see if she fires. Oh, she wanted to. She's a little bit flooded.
All right. So found the only AM station that has music and the radio works. So of course we got to use it. And uh, my friend Tom, my neighbor, is uh, here with me. He wanted to come for a ride in the truck. Here's that granny here I was telling you about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can definitely start out in second on this truck. I go for the clutch. I think I ran over something. But it doesn't matter, we're back home. We gotta get that car rebuilt. Alright. I'd say that was a more successful first run. I'm learning it or well second run excuse me and uh there we go man this thing's a hoot well i think i'm gonna leave it there for you guys and uh i'm gonna do a little bit more adjustment on the brakes they could be better um but you know they're not i'm not having to like mash it mash it to make the thing stop anymore which is awesome so um this thing definitely does not go very fast i actually didn't even check the speedometer to see if it was working i should have taken a look at that um i honestly kind of doubt it's working but we're gonna get uh i think in the next video uh tail lights and um maybe some of the other electrical gremlins sorted out uh just a couple of things maybe look at the blower motor uh but really we need tail lights and i think that's about it Oh, carburetor rebuild. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be in uh, the next one as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably be doing that pretty soon. But an exhaust and a couple other things, but we're getting there. She'll be ready to register soon. And the tires, tires, got to figure those out. Because um, especially the inner one on, on this side is just off the bead. So I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, look at that. So it's not carrying any load at all because, you know, it's off the bead, which is fine. Um, I don't think the temp gauge is working either, so we gotta figure that out. But, uh, yeah, you can see where I bled the brakes. <laughs> so I didn't quite pull it all the way back up and I ran over a stick. Anyway, I, uh, I'm, I'm getting happier and happier with this thing by the day. So, uh, I guess I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>